Today is Wednesday, November the 11th, and you can see that um, volume was low. Uh, advancers eked out an edge over decliners, so we don't have the McClellan oscillator yet. That'll probably come in another hour or so, but you can expect it to continue to be above the overbought line, just as we saw the last time, which corresponds to right up here, and then we had this pullback. Doesn't mean we'll have a pullback again, but it's possible. Gee, I thought it was after four o'clock. There's the four o'clock bell. So, um, uh, S&P, look at that. Look where the S&P finished up. So it's made a double top yesterday, pushed beyond it, and then fell down uh, to this level, 3550. Today it moved up, but was not able to make the... Um, previous high but if you take the not the previous high but if you take the previous closing high we did touch the previous closing high and then we pulled back so we're going to see um, an attempt to break through that and even if it does give it a day give it two give one day to confirm it one day above another day to confirm it or even two days um, to say that we've really got um, a bear situation coming would certainly help if we had some indication out of Washington that we were going to have a new administration in a timely manner. Apple uh, had a great day today. Didn't start off all that well, but finished up 3%. So we've got this bounce not only off the 8 EMA today, um, but also above the cloud. And the Chiku Span yesterday used the cloud as a launching, uh, used the candle um, as a launching point and Apple is just going higher. Neo, my favorite stock, still tracking it on a five minute basis, and it had this gap down uh, at the open, but then I looked and I saw that there was all sorts of um, bad tech news in China, and I was wondering if these car companies, who report earnings, by the way, I think in November the 27th, you might wanna check that, all three of the EV companies in China, Li, um, forget the other one, X something, and NEO all report the same day. NEO is expected to have good earnings, but it really doesn't matter. Tesla didn't have good earnings when they came out. We're really looking at something in the future. Anyway, gap down, and um, the next five minutes continue to move down, and then we had volume which was higher than the previous volume, and we started to move up. We quickly closed the gap, and then pulled down to, te to test the gap, dropped down, came up above the gap, and just finished doing that all day long until about uh, middle of the afternoon then we came up and we played with the Woody's pivot line. So if you're trading this product, it's really trading technically, there's no question about that, that it's using the Woody's pivots. The, uh, I don't think the 200% Fibonacci is that important anymore. It's uh, that 200% is right here and it really didn't play that as important here as the um, Woody's pivot did. And certainly we saw the Woody's pivot being important there. And the other technical thing was that it closed the gap. So we can take that gap out of there now. And we'll look at this tomorrow. Let's look at uh, NEO on a daily basis and let's take a look for that telltale sign of volume. Uh, let's get rid of the pivots here. There's the volume. So look at the volume that we had, um, declining volume here, which was a sign for us, um, moving up on declining volume. Then we had that pullback. And now we've had volume that's a little bit less, showing that institutions were not necessarily involved today, that it was probably just the day traders pushing up the volume. Um, but keep an eye on it. I continue to be long with 1,000 shares and short next week's 41 at 310 and 43 at 410. Uh, so they're covered calls. Uh, Home Depot, a very nice day today. Look at that, came down to settle on the eight and the top of a flat cloud. What do they say about flat clouds? Flat clouds attract um, and are used uh, as a test for, for uh, reliability. The Chiku Span, meanwhile, is right inside this candle. Uh, so it's going to open up tomorrow regardless underneath the candle and looking at some resistance. So just keep an eye on that area. Let's just flag it 
we're watching for tomorrow. Um, Caterpillar still jostling up and down, up and down. Uh, NVIDIA was really down at the open today. Um, and then it came to pop up and had rejection at the 8 EMA. Let's take a look at Boeing. Uh, the banks, by the way, were all down a little bit today. They just had too much of a run um, on Monday. Let's take a look at Boeing. No, let's take a look at um, Boeing, which we haven't looked at in some time. They are getting ready to launch, relaunch the uh, the um, Max 737 Max. But look at this. We had some exuberance that took it outside of the Bollinger Bands. Now it's popped into the Bollinger Bands. Let's take a look at the, uh, let's take this these lines out here. This channel uh, is no longer as relevant as it was. Uh, let's put in there, let's get rid of that. Let's put in the, I'm finished really, if you, know, if you don't wanna know anything about Bank of America. I just think the market's gonna move up tomorrow. Uh, or Friday, but it still is, don't forget, in an overbought situation. Now here's the cloud for Boeing. Um, we're above the cloud. Chiku Span took a bit of a drop. The Chiku Span could be tested very well right here at the top of the cloud. Um, but the 200, if you want to buy Boeing or buy um, any call spreads or future calls, put an alert on the 200 um, EMA, which is right there. And let's add another one and let's put crosses. Can't, so let's say um, is uh, less than or equal to the 200 SMA. This is something that uh, is so nice about uh, Motive Wave. It's just an incredibly flexible tool. So we're now going to set two alerts for crossing above the this one and that one. Now it doesn't really show that very well here, so I'm going to have to take a look and see why. Um, that's when you want to buy Boeing when it passes above the 200, comes back and tests the 200 again. 